Marco. Sean. We're on our way. We are that. on our way. We're on our way to some cool innovations. And uh, I think the the industry is clamoring, not, not for AI necessarily, but for things that actually help. <laughs> So we haven't even started. You already said AI. I mean, I, I can't, I'm getting I can't, it out of the I can't way. believe it. You, you just don't give me a break with this thing. I know. No, I'm getting it out of the way. I, I don't know how much we're going to talk about it today. But <laughs> my point is, um, in, in real life, uh, organizations are struggling to keep up with the threats and the attacks. And uh, while there may be some whiz bang stuff out there, I think we need real solutions that tackle every little aspect of the challenges they face from the threats to the operations to everything. And I have a feeling that our story today with Coro is going to help with some of that, if not a lot of it. <laughs> so yeah. I'm thrilled to have, have drawer on uh, Coro. Uh, good to see you. Good to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Great. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, Sean Marco. Yep. It's good. Good to have you on. And uh, I'm excited to get, get this origin story about uh, how the company was founded and, and what uh, what value it brings to the to the market and to your customers. Um, before we do that, though, a little bit about you, Dror. Sure. Here, so I'm, uh, I'm Dror. I'm one of the co-founders uh, here at Coro. Uh, originally, I was uh, uh, the uh, CIO of the Israeli military police after being discharged, started uh, different companies ended up uh, starting this company with uh, three partners in 2014. So we're about to celebrate our 10th anniversary. Very nice. Happy birthday. That's exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's really exciting, especially considering the road we've traveled and where we are today. Yep. Yeah, definitely a, a big milestone for today's <laughs> market. Uh, so I love origin story. I mean, I, uh, the best story is the beginning. Either we talk about superheroes or we talk about story with a moral for kids or, you know, technology need good stories. So I would love for you to tell me the why behind the Coro company. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So when uh, we started the company, we realized that there was a massive deficiency in the market where... 100% of the cybersecurity companies are either focused on the enterprise or the consumer, but the majority of the economy is actually in between. So 63% of the GDP in the US is produced by mid-market companies and small businesses. Meanwhile, they're completely overlooked by the entire industry. So what is happening in uh, the real world is enterprise players are trying to push an enterprise product down a mid-market company's throat, or a consumer player is trying to shove a consumer product down an SMB throat. And we uh, felt that, first of all, uh, that just leaves a huge swath of the economy completely unprotected, for real. Uh, and secondly, we felt that we should be the ones to come in and change the rules of the game, and we have. Um, and that's really how the company started. And that is actually why we've been growing like we have. We've been growing 300% year over year for the last five years straight. Uh, we've raised just over $280 million in funding uh, over the last uh, three years. And the main reason is because we're solving a problem nobody else cares about. It's not that uh, they couldn't solve it. It's they just don't care. Yeah, and it's interesting. I'm, I have a lot of uh, background in what you just described doing, sadly, doing just that, <laughs> trying to force one or the other ends into the middle. And um, we'll, we'll get to the tech part of it in a minute. But I think there's a bigger picture here as well that I want you to maybe touch on, which is there's a sales process. There's how you price it. It's how you support this space. It's... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, the whole operations. Do they have the right staff to support the the solution? So talk to me a bit, a bit about this space in the middle, the, the mid-market. Yeah, some of the yeah. They, they need that they're not being served through uh, some of the other players. Yeah, so so you touched on 
a couple of the key things when we sat around the uh, the design table and said, okay, so why not sell an enterprise product into the mid market? We realized that there are three things in the mid market and in small businesses that are very, very different fundamentally than a large enterprise. One, normally they will not have a dedicated cybersecurity team. It's IT. If they even have an IT team, many many times they outsource IT completely. Um, but uh, if they have an IT team, the IT team is uh, the organization that actually supports cybersecurity in addition to everything else they have to deal with as an IT team. That's one. The second thing is um, they have a very limited budget. So they play what we call threat roulette. They know that they only have this much budget and they basically place bets on what threats they think are going to be uh, the most vulnerable for them, knowing that they're leaving other areas of uh, the security landscape or the threat uh, the threat landscape open. Um, and three, it's all about complexity. So the cybersecurity industry has done a great job of convincing everyone that it's super complex and you need very specialized tools for very different threat vectors or threat actors or anything of that sort. And it's a very self-serving way of looking at cybersecurity because that way you and the analysts and everybody plays this in this pool of specialty. What that generates is an enormous amount of complexity. And for a mid-market company that is, uh, or a small business that are struggling to stay afloat business-wise, it's so difficult for them to now deal with this complexity. So our entire approach was solving for these three things. One, instead of having numerous different products that you need to buy, install, maintain, configure, um, and make sure that they work together and don't contradict each other and, and so on and so on, it's one platform. It, it's the what we call the power of one. It's one platform that has one dashboard, one pane of glass that you work through, and one endpoint agent that covers everything that you would need, starting from uh, endpoint protection and and uh, DLP at the endpoint and, and security posture of the device and MDM and so forth and so on. One endpoint agent, one dashboard, one platform, and that's all you need to know. And there's 14 different modules that you can turn on and off as your needs change over time. That's exactly what I was like when I looked at your website and your model. And I was like, I wish I could have this module approach to almost everything I own, right? Because you buy this thing and it, it comes with the whole bundle. And I'm like, I, what it, I don't need maybe 80% of that stuff. So I, I really like that approach. Tell me a little bit more about that. So, so one of the things that we've discovered was A, um, that the, the mid-market in general, because they don't have the staff, they just want to know that they're protected, right? And in order to be protected, they're being told that there is a list of things that they need to worry about, whether it's uh, endpoint protection or uh, data governance or cloud protection, or of course, email, user protection, uh, a normal abnormal behavior protection, all of these different things. Uh, what we've done was we created a module for each one of those areas, and we allow them to simply turn on and off on demand what it is that they want to protect. Um, a great example, for example, is data governance. <clears throat> when you look at data governance today, uh, a lot of this is driven by government regulations or insurance regulations, uh, where uh, a company needs to have data governance in order to comply either with government regulations or to be able to get cyber insurance. What we've done, we, and it's really normally super complex with scripting and dictionaries and, and classifications and all that. We took all of that away and we basically asked the customer, do you want data governance? What data do you want to govern? And where do you want it governed? And once you define these three things, whether it's on the endpoint, in the cloud, in your email, in storage, 
It doesn't matter. You just turn it on and it just happens magically. You don't need to configure it. You don't need to uh, write scripts uh, that identify what kind of data you need governed. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, going back to the original statement I made, it's not only about consolidation and making it a power of one. It's also making it very simple to digest because my customer, the mid-market and the small businesses, don't have the time to deal with the complexity of the traditional cybersecurity, tiered, multi-product, multi-vendor concepts at all. But Sean, you touched on something else mm -hmm. earlier, uh, which was also around affordability, right? So as I said before, one of the things that we came to the table with was, we looked at this and we said, what is most difficult? And one of the things was pricing. Because when you look at uh, a mid-market company, for example, as I said before, they have a very limited budget, and now they need to take this budget and place it on specific threats. And that's not how the world works anymore, because attackers don't go this way anymore. They go laterally. They come in from all different directions at the same time. So by you protecting a specific area, yeah, you're protecting that area, but you're not protecting the business. We took it from the perspective of how do we protect the business, that small business, that mid-market company, that school, uh, that local municipality. We look at them as an organization and how do we cover them from all directions and make sure that they don't need, we take away that headache from them. We become cybersecurity around uh, the, the entire perimeter, everything that they need, in, in this one platform and bring it to a point where they can actually afford it. So the modules, for example, <clears throat> each one of the modules is $3 per user per month, which is very reasonable. If you buy all our modules, uh, an entire package, it's anywhere between 15 to $18 per user per month. That's it. To put things in perspective, if you bought all these modules from another vendor, it would end up being anywhere between $45 to $115 per user per month. And at that number, a mid-market company or definitely a small business simply can't afford it. But at $15 a month, you know, if they have 100 employees, that's $1,500 to protect the entire company. That's something people put on their credit card. So we've taken away all of the barriers to complexity, uh, and the cost, and, uh, and one more thing that we've done was because they have a very small team and because my customers are, even the team that they have is inundated with other stuff that they need to work on because they're the IT organization, they're not a, a dedicated cybersecurity organization, we've automated almost all of the cybersecurity tasks. So almost all the remediation, all, all of the detection, and all of their remediation is done automatically. There is no human involvement. So we remove the workload from humans to machines. So all three issues that these guys are facing, we've taken away. Do you have bundles for specific yes. kind of business? Because I, I mean, I, I come from a family of very small business. So I, you know, this wasn't this was before the internet. That was my grandfather, but <laughs> but I can see him kind of like projecting in, in this world and be like, yeah, okay, this is good, but uh, affordable, but I still don't know <laughs> don't know what I need. So yeah, yeah. So I think <clears throat> so. First of all, yes, we have. Uh, bundles, uh, we call them suites yeah. that you can buy. So there is an email protection suite, uh, there is an access protection suite, uh, there is a um, an endpoint protection suite, and then you can buy each module on its own, you can buy each one of those suites, or you can buy what we call the complete, uh, the core complete protection, which is all of the modules, as I said, for uh, 15, uh, between 15 and $18 per user per month and then you're completely protected. Uh, we also are very active in very specific verticals, such as education and automotive. And for them, we also tailored some of our offering to make it more uh, approachable. So for example, for education, uh, we have a model where uh, we're helping them secure their staff, but also their students, uh, which is very interesting because a lot of times 
they share the same infrastructure. So if you secure the staff really, really well, but a student comes in with their iPad or or with their MacBook or whatever, and they do something silly, they might actually create damage for the entire school. So we have a model where we help them protect the staff as well as the students in sp specifically in education, uh, bringing up uh, basically responding to what you've asked about specific verticals or specific uh, uh, areas uh, from a bundling perspective. So talk to me about, and I presume that's general education and higher education universities and things like that as well. Yeah. It's uh, K through 12 universities, vocational, every everything. We, we yeah, think- they, they all need the help. <laughs> they all need help. And if you look at the news, education has been hit probably the hardest in 2023 with schools shutting down, uh, school districts shutting down because of cyber attacks. Uh, four years ago, you've never heard that uh, education wasn't a target. It became a target, very active target in the last couple of years. So especially in 2023, we've had some terrible stories about schools shutting down. We have this uh, Lincoln University in, in uh, uh, Illinois shut down, period closed down and and sent all the students home and, and this is a historic university that has been a historic college I'm sorry that has been around since the 1800s and because of a cyber attack they they were destroyed and uh, so, so it, it breaks my heart to hear these kinds of stories because had we been there they would have been still in action they would have been still alive you know so so for us it's really a a passion mission. It's not just a business. We are protecting the backbone of uh, the economy and the education. The people that really need us the most. Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. It's all good. The, the world brings you. <laughs> they're they're already they're excited. Already heard for these you. Conversations. <laughs> like, uh, let me call them. So I want to I want to take you to the the very first step of this journey for your customers because. You automate a lot of stuff in terms of management, maintenance, response, all of that. Uh, clearly affordable, organized and packaged in ways that, that makes it approachable and easy to consume from that perspective. Um, presumably some information to help them kind of navigate that. But there's still the, I, I need help just to figure out what is my scope, what is my exposure, how should I take the first steps? Because I may not be able to go the full the full suite to start. I might need to start small because my team is small. So how how do you work with organizations that need that that very first step support, either directly or or, or through partners in the channel or however however you help? Yeah. So so first of all, um, a lot of our business comes from the channel. So we are very very channel centric and very friendly to the channel. Uh, and about right now, about 72% of our uh, business comes from our partners. So we love them and we treat them like royalty that they are. Um, so one of the things that we do is we help them both from an education perspective. The, the onboarding process for a partner, for example, has a lot of education that we provide completely for free as part of the package of helping them identify what are the things that they need to do with their customers? If it's a direct customer, um, so we do an onboarding with them as well in which we uh, figure out exactly what they need and help them get that exact match of what they need uh, to in, in their own landscape. But in addition to that, uh, we have what we call modular uh, managed services. So we have a managed service offering that if a customer or partner don't really know how to operate or don't want to operate cybersecurity, we can operate this on their behalf. Uh, so we have- Like a managed detection and response, for example, MDR? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's a managed service that uh, runs, uh, that is US-based um, and uh, can respond to events and uh, requirements and, uh, make sure that um, the partner or the direct customer are protected in the right way that they need to be. 
Well, it sounds good to me, Roar, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see you in uh, San Francisco. You're, you're going to many events this year, but uh, most of, most uh, imminent one is the RSA conference. So we'll see you there, and I know you're gonna you're gonna be chatting with uh, customers and partners and and uh, investors and all all kinds of folks to continue your journey to help this very important space. And I'm I'm really excited for our deeper dive chat. We're gonna get into. Uh, I'm looking forward to it on Thursday. Uh, we, we scratched the surface on the tech during our broadcast alley conversation. We're going to get into, well, how does this, how does this fit into the bigger it program? How do teams with and without security um, work with you and, and, and solve some of the problems. We're going to get some use cases, some stories from you, um, the outcomes, right? What's, what's the benefit of, of working with Coro? Uh, so I'm really excited for that. We're going to do that on Thursday and, uh, that's in the broadcast alley there in the afternoon on Thursday. So I'm super excited for that. And I encourage everybody to stay tuned for that episode. It's going to be yeah. fun. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person there. And the reason why we do this is that we can, we are aware that not, not everybody is going to be in San Francisco. It will be a mess if everybody in the world That's will right. be in San Francisco. So <laughs> we're going to go there. We're going to have the conversation, the matter. And hopefully you can get the benefit of this knowledge that we're going to share with you all of you by going there and meeting people uh, like Drawer and many more. So yes. you guys well, stay Coro, tuned. Coro's there on behalf of the mid-market. How's that? Exactly. <laughs> we are. Representing. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, exciting. And uh, it's about to happen. So safe travel, everybody. And yes. everybody else listening, stay tuned for Chapter 2 of yep. uh, Coro. Yes. Thank you very much, Sean and Marco, for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, those listening and watching, um, you don't have to wait for the next conversation. Go ahead to coro.net and uh, connect with the team there. And if you happen to be in San Francisco, uh, come with questions. Look, come with a, come with an, an eye for a solution from uh, from Drawer and team. All right. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned. We'll uh, more to come from Coro and uh, ITSB Magazine.